Okay, so for today's demo, and since you uh, asked me to not to use invoices, um, I, I picked here a couple of ID cards, a couple of pay slips, a couple of passports, and then finally, very strange and hard things to process, like uh, receipts and writing, uh, these kind of photos with, with, uh, with this kind of watermarks, and also uh, multi-page invoices with a lot of data. So these are the most complex uh, use cases. So I, I will go from the most simplest one to the, to the, the, the more complex one. So using Postman, um, this is basically our API. Uh, our API allow you to authenticate through an API key, is a, a JSON RESTful API uh, that has essentially two endpoints. One, to submit a document. And let's grab here, let me submit this one here. That is the, the hard one with the end writing. And once you submit your document, you will get back um, a message that, that states that the, the, the transaction was accepted and you have in the others, you have here the document ID. Okay, And I will just copy paste this into my, my note. Okay, and I'll put here. And uh, this Basic, basically is telling you that the transaction was accepted. It's important to mention that our API is asynchronous because there's no way in the world that you can have 100% accuracy in real time. So this means that you will have uh, to have a verification in some cases, which means that the, the response will not be synchronous. So you can have two ways of querying back the results. Either you pass here a callback um, that is a web service that we will uh, post there the, 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 once the information is ready. Or you can use the, um, this document ID to get back the results. Okay? I will pick here some, some of the cases just for you to see the results. So this is the endpoint where you get the results. And let me put here side by side with the document, okay? Uh, for the sake of being transparent, all these documents were documents that I found in Google, so there's no uh, security or privacy issue here. If you search in Google, probably you find the same documents. Um, and in this case, you see that the response has a lot of, of different other information, but the most important part is the data, the data part of the JSON, where you'll find the, um, the birth date, the nationality, the document number, the name and surname, the expiracy date, the gender, okay? So these are the, the, the information that, that you, you are seeing here. It's important to notice that you see here that there are already standardizations and format conversions, which means that we don't return the data as a string as it is written on the document. We return it in a canonical format, which makes much more sense because probably different ID cards may have different uh, formats for dates and you don't want to handle that uh, in the integration part. So we do this kind of conversion to make it more simple um, and more easy for you to, to handle this. Let's pick another example. Uh, and in this case, uh, you see here that you start to have watermark overlaps. So things become more difficult to read, even for a human. And I will query this document ID. And once again, you have a lot of, of fields and data information, but Please focus on, on the data a part of the JSON. And once again, you see here uh, that the data was uh, accurately um, extracted, although you see here that the gender uh, and the labels and the format changed uh, and it's not equal to the last one. 
just to be also transparent, we did not train this any, in any way um, before submitting this doc. Okay, so these are the most strength, uh, straightforward because it's a card. It's very uh, similar, even though you may change your country. Uh, it's a, a European ID card, so they will be mostly the same. Um, and now let's jump to things that start to become more and more difficult. This is a payslip, okay? And let me pick here the ID of this one. And let's submit this. Okay, so now you have another data schema and another set of fields. And this is very important. Depending on the type of document that is activated on your subscription, you will have access to different fields, to different data schemas. Processing an ID card will be completely different from processing a payslip or an invoice. This data schema is defined when you are creating your own subscription, okay? So there's no need to training, there's no need to, to set up, but you need to define which fields you want to get out of the document, okay? And as you see here, um, once again, the data are standardized, the, the amounts are decimals, uh, which also is very good because you see here that there are um, different ways of representing numbers. And you see here that for some reason, there are fi uh, empty fields. And you may say, okay, so this is an error? No, they simply are not present in the document. We are talking about employer tax ID. And as you see here, the, the, the invoice number does not contain that information. The, the, sorry, the payslip does not contain that information. So it's impossible to return a data schema or a field where it's not present on the document, okay? Um, and that is the reason why it's empty. So it's empty not because it fails, but because it's not present on the document, okay? Now let me show you something that is very strange. You see here, this is a payslip, but you cannot read it because it's very, very, very small. Um, and for those cases, we return what we call a rejection. And you see here that this document was rejected and the document class is unknown. What this means in practice is that you submitted a document that could not be processed because it's unreadable, even for humans, even for our human in the loop, they, they are not able to read this. So therefore, the document and the transaction was rejected, okay? Now let's pick here this kind of, of, of photo, which has a lot of noise. And I'm picking this up and not this one, because as you can imagine, this would be very simple. This starts to become more difficult because you have overlays, you have qu the quality itself. So let me open this one. I think it's the seven and show you again the results. Okay, so in this case, this is a passport. And once again, the data schema will be completely different. Uh, and once again, you get all the data and, 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 and it's, it's correct, okay? It's 100% correct, okay? Uh, even though there might, this is a photo and there might be uh, this kind of overlaps. So now let's go to the more difficult ones, okay? So I've, I've shown you uh, the payslips that are, that are already uh, quite, quite demanding and challenging. Uh, passports and ID cards, let's assume that they are very standard. But now let's, let's go to this kind of, of, of photo with perspective blurs watermarks and see how this, this behaves. So this is nine, let me just pick here. The nine, okay. So the data scheme for invoices is quite different from the ones that you saw before. And the reason why it's different is because it has line items. It has arrays within, arrays of data within the same document, okay? So let's go through some of the fields. Uh, 4952, 4952, issue date, uh, issue date, where is the issue date? Is here, okay. Uh, 
then you have the line items. Most of these data, as you see here, is not present on the document. So we, we don't have the information to fill up these fields, although they are present. But we have for the quantity, that is one, for the base total amount, that is 895, and for the description uh, that you see here. And you see that there are one, two, three, four line items. You see here that the document is identifier is this one, that you see here, uh, is US dollars. Uh, there's no due date here. The supplier name, the restaurant is this one. Um, and, and that's it. So this is what we call a financial document, is an invoice plus uh, the others plus the line items. And this is exactly the JSON that you will get back if you use the extract at docdigitizer.com. One question that I have that, that, that make us a lot is this kind of, of, of invoices where you have multi-page and then you have tables uh, with a lot of, of data. So let, let, let's, let's check, check this one and see how it went. Okay, let's close this. Okay, so as you see here, uh, the data is gathered from all the pages of the invoice. So part of the data is gathered uh, in the first page, like the bill to, send to, ship to, purchase order, order name, all those kinds of, 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 um, of information. And then you have the breakdown uh, into uh, line by line. And in this case, you have, as you see here, a lot of lines. Uh, because the, the, the quantity of the information is very dense um, and you have here a, a lot of information and that the VAT breakdown. Uh, so yes, we extract data from a multi-page invoice uh, with tables that can roll out to, to multiple pages. That is something that we do and the information that we get is always verified trusted data that you can streamline directly to your RP. Okay. Finally, I left, uh, I, I, I'm using now the one, the invoice that I submitted before. So this one, when we started this demo and uh, this one is, as you can imagine, the most difficult one, uh, even for us as a human. Okay. So, uh, what I would like to show to you, first of all, um, is that you have here on the JSON the created and uh, review date, okay? Which means that it, it's, it's very clear to you uh, how much time it took to get the results. And in this case, as you see here, it took two minutes, okay? Um, and once again, this is not synchronous, but it's very quick, okay? And you see here that you have Cafe Americano, Red Velvet, Cake, uh, Karma Samusa, uh, Vopi Fizz with the numbers here, uh, let me, the 60, the chicken pizza, okay? And then uh, the, the Baristi Coffee Company, okay? And finally, uh, the, the total amount of this invoice and also the date, the date is handwritten here. So yes, uh, we extracted all of this information, although it's handwritten. 